Hey y'all, I'm Sarah. This is Art of the Overshare. Welcome back to my channel. As I'm filming this, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 coronavirus thing. I've been in my house for so long and I've been telling myself I was gonna make more YouTube videos and I haven't. There's been just a lot of sweatpants. Anyway, so today I am going to make a video, finally, on the topic that people ask me about, hands down, the most. Whenever I talk about making a YouTube video, people always, always ask me to please make videos about my tattoos. You may have noticed I have one or two hundred hours worth. I guess it's over 200 hours worth now. So I'm going to dive right in today and talk about some things that I wish that I had thought of or that someone had told me before I got as heavily tattooed as I am. I've got Banana behind me and Ziggy. <laughs> as usual holding it down while I make this video and I'm still not back into the swing of making YouTube videos where I'm talking to a camera so bear with me probably gonna be a little bit awkward but here we go everything that I talk about today is gonna be based on my own experience and it may vary from person to person it might be completely different for you and I would love to hear if you disagree go ahead and get in the comments and tell me your experience and how it's different especially if you're in a different area, because I know that different parts of the world and different parts of the country are very different in the way that they see tattoos. So I would love to hear from you. Just please be civil. Before we do this, I'm actually going to put some powder on my forehead because I have a light set up to try to keep the light even here. And it is just like reflecting back off of my forehead so much right now. <laughs> Little bit less reflecting off my forehead, thanks. Okay. Y'all are going to think that I'm really dumb for saying this right now, but first and foremost, when I started getting more heavily tattooed, I was only thinking about how I wanted to look. I was not, I was envisioning myself with sleeves and with my chest completely tattooed and whatever. And I wasn't thinking about what other people would think. If you are someone who prefers to be left alone in public, who wants to like blend into the background, I don't really want like attention when I'm out in public. I just want to go about my business, go grocery shopping, whatever. And if you're very heavily tattooed in most places, I'm sure there's places where it's not like this, but in most places that I've been, including when I was living in Los Angeles, you're very heavily tattooed. People are going to look at you and or try to talk to you. So everyone from little kids to little old ladies, like creepy old dudes and everything in between. People are going to talk about your tattoos to you, to their friends. It's like an opening for people to try to talk to you. If, you know, in my case, I've had so many guys try to hit on me by coming up and being like, nice tats. And the more tattoos that I get, definitely the worse that that gets. Like little kids pulling on their mom's leg and going, mommy, 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 mommy. Why does she look like that? And uh, you know, it is what it is. I've gotten used to it at this point, but there's definitely times when I just want to like go to the grocery store and kind of be left alone. And unless I'm wearing like a turtleneck, people are like, whoa, I don't even have my face tattooed or anything. I haven't really talked to anyone else that's as heavily tattooed as I am about this kind of phenomenon and how they feel about it. Like, I would love to know the reactions from people in a regular place if you have like a bunch of face tattoos. So if that's you, get in the comments. I want to hear about it. <laughs> Sometimes it's fine. Like my neighbor, right before I started to film this, I actually had to run downstairs to our storage unit and grab my tripod. And I ran into this lady in the hallway. We're still fairly new here. I'd never seen her before. We're doing the uh, COVID-19 thing. So she was a good distance away from me. And she said, Oh, you have all these tattoos, look at you. If you were a man, my sister would say, oh, you should marry him because you can, you know that he can handle pain and he's got money. And she stops for a second and she says, that might be true for you too, which I thought was so funny. This lady was definitely like a senior citizen. I would say easily older than my parents who were like in their 70s. So, uh, that kind of interaction is fun, but I've had some not so pleasant interactions because of my tattoos, and that's just something to keep in mind. Something that I wish that I had thought about before I started doing this. So for me, it's like, this is what I wanna look like. I didn't think about that kind of stuff 
One time I was walking into a Ralph's, which is a grocery store in Studio City, right outside of the city of Los Angeles. And this kid grabs her mom's leg and she says, mommy, mommy, why does that lady have drawings all over her? And the mom looks down at the kid and looks at me and goes, because some people are trashy. <laughs> it's just super loud. Like, what is the point of that? I just wanna go buy some asparagus. To be honest, I think that the most negative interactions that I've had about my tattoos have been in grocery stores, which is super random. When I lived in Los Angeles, I lived in downtown and in kind of the Hollywood area, there's a lot more people that are like the Hollywood scene people who have more tattoos, but I, in the downtown area, I was one of the more heavily tattooed people that I saw on a regular basis. And I didn't really think about it, but actually since we've moved back to Virginia, there's more heavily tattooed people in Virginia than there was in downtown LA. I feel like in LA though, people didn't really say anything about it because you saw a lot of just different characters, maybe not necessarily tattoos, but people who were kind of doing their own form of self-expression. And while there are more people with tattoos, I think in Virginia, since we moved back, I've noticed that there are more people around me on a daily basis, even in you know, the store or whatever, at restaurants, servers who have more tattoos than I feel like I saw in most of LA. People are not as used to self-expression, so it's a lot more likely that people are going to say stuff to me here than in LA. Sort of piggybacking off of the first thing, I do get treated differently sometimes because I'm so heavily tattooed, and I can tell a difference in how strangers generally treat me. When I'm covered, if I'm wearing you know, a turtleneck and I have sleeves that are covering up my hand tattoos, versus if I go out like this and people are just like, whoa. <laughs> in extreme cases, of course, people treat you like you're a criminal if you have a bunch of tattoos, which is so funny because really they are pretty expensive unless you're going and getting like the hookup from somebody or getting them done in a house. I think that's kind of funny because if you would look at somebody with an expensive designer handbag, for example, and be like, oh, that person has money. I've spent many expensive designer handbags worth of money on my tattoos, but I guess people don't think about that. <laughs> there are still jobs that in the year 2020, you will be denied if you have lots of visible tattoos. It is less common now than it was even a few years ago, but it is still a thing. I have found personally that having a chest piece seems to be the deal breaker for me because I didn't ever really have a conventional jobs where I sat behind a desk. It hasn't been a huge problem, but there have been gigs like modeling jobs and stuff that I didn't get because my look is too alternative. It's kind of one reason that I do more makeup content because makeup brands don't care about that kind of thing. They embrace more uniqueness and self-expression, but if you've ever looked at brands' Instagrams and seen how some, the, some of them, some brands, some of them, tend to post people who look very similar a lot. <laughs> I generally won't get PR from those brands or get reposted from those brands. So this kind of goes back to the first thing a little bit, but guys definitely sexualize tattoos. If you don't know, I used to do racier content, like bikini model type stuff, and I had huge fake boobs, which I don't have anymore. And I sort of thought that when I took my implants out that I would get less of this, but no, it's like guys treat tattoos like boobs. I know that women see tattoos on guys the same way, like they think the tattoos are so sexy on guys, I don't have that experience <laughs> and I get so frustrated when I post makeup content. I'm like, look, I use this new product. I really like it. And for some reason, Instagram loves to show my stuff to guys who are into tattoos. So I get comments and messages all the time. I'll be like, look at this eyeshadow that I've done this video of. And the comments from guys are like, sexy tattoos, baby, sexy tattoos, sexy. <laughs> and I get so frustrated. It's like, why are you like this? If you are a feminine presenting person and you are heavily tattooed, be prepared that you might get a lot of that kind of thing where 
um, you get potentially unwanted attention, sexual attention, fetishization, whatever from guys because of tattoos. I also get these share pages. This is like one of the most mind blowing things. There's a lot of things about like Instagram and social media that are sort of mind blowing to me, but I will post a portrait photo talking about makeup. And some of these like sexy tattoo girl repost pages will have like a bunch of pictures of butts and boobs and butts and boobs and butts and boobs. And then just this like makeup picture of my face. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why did you take this picture of my face and repost it? And then I always get them taken down. And people think that I mean, but I do not want their followers. The last thing that I think I'm gonna talk about for this video is, it sounds really cliche and really dumb, but tattoos are still pretty much forever. You can get laser removal to an extent. Um, you can remove and cover up. This whole arm of mine is actually a cover up. If you look really closely in some of the spots now, you can kind of see them like this right here was part of a bat wing. So I had these black bats on my arm. That's a whole story disaster in and of itself. But uh, this whole arm is covering up those bats and I was fortunate enough to be able to find Aaron Neiman. Otherwise, it's like a blacked out arm, maybe I could have had worse luck with a cover-up, you know, if I'd found someone that wasn't as proficient at it to do the cover-up, or I would have just had these ridiculous bats. And the thing that made me frustrated about it is like the bats were fine, oh my gosh, I don't know, like 12 years ago when I got them or something. And then I started getting more tattoos and I started getting higher quality tattoos than these bats and it just didn't go together. I'm gonna use that to segue into really the last thing that I'm gonna talk about here. Segue. If you think that you might want to be heavily tattooed one day, think about that when you're getting your tattoos now, even if it's only a couple, because if you get like crappy tattoos or you get like a big random one and you might want a sleeve one day, but then you have to figure out how to work a tattoo into a sleeve, just try to keep that in mind. Um, think about what your future might look like. I know that if I were going to start getting tattooed again today, I would probably only get black and gray tattoos. I wouldn't have any color tattoos. I like the aesthetic a lot better, but it's too late now. <laughs> I'm gonna do a tattoo regrets video pretty soon. That's another thing that I get a ton of questions about. So I'll talk more about that then. Keep in mind that the person that you are is probably going to change a lot. For me, in the like 12 years or whatever, since I started getting larger tattoos, changed so much. So I have a ridiculous tattoo that actually says, you forever. <laughs> and I'm thinking about getting it covered up because when I started getting tattooed in general, I was like in a different place in my life. Of course, my tastes were way different. I had a way different style. And that's just something to kind of consider when you're getting tattooed is that something that seems like it means a lot to you right now, like getting a band tattoo, for example. You get a band tattoo because you love this band. Well, what happens if it turns out that like the lead singer of the band is a terrible person or whatever? There's just a lot to kind of keep in mind when you're getting something on your body that's relatively permanent. Another thing that you could consider if you're getting something that you think you might regret in the future is how easy it is to cover up. So for example, I once worked with a lady who had a heart in red with red initials of her boyfriend in it. And then when they broke up, she just got the heart filled in and that was it. It was so easy. <laughs> so it made him happy and feel special at the time, but she was already thinking when she got it how she could cover it in the future. <laughs> oh my gosh, my dog's butt. She's got her butt like all the way just up against me right now. Banana. I think that is about it for now, for this video. See if I can put this into something coherent. I hope that my experience can help someone out. I hope you don't all think that I am very dumb after listening to the things that I learned later. <laughs> or I, I figured out later, I guess. Feel free to sound off in the comments if you agree or disagree, have a discussion. I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you liked it and I will have some more videos coming up in the future. Stay safe, be well. I'll see you next time. Bye.